The world as we knew it has ended. A storm of eldritch chaos from beyond the understanding of mortal minds has collided with our home and torn apart everything we built and loved. Reanimate corpses that somehow still live, roam the streets, strange creatures hide in the dark, magic has resurfaced after a millennia, and dinosaurs graze the swamps and forests again. The world as we knew it has ended. Welcome, this is Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead. Here we meet our protagonist for the first time, Bellum. I won't go into too much detail at this moment, but he is an elf who has always dreamed of becoming an Archmage, part of a society that has kept the traditions of magic alive. Despite the technology of modern times, he sought out a teacher in one of the human megacities with the promise of starting the road of an academy magus. After only a few months of basic learning, enough to pick up the raw essentials, the world ended. Earlier today, his teacher went into the other room to quote-unquote find a way out of this mess and hasn't returned, seemingly vanishing from the basement. You can hear clawing, screaming, and the breaking of walls and glass outside. And now he must learn how to survive. However, that dream of being an archmage still burns inside him. And maybe some of these spells he's picked up along the way might be useful. So welcome to Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead. We have Vellum here in the center here, and we start in a, start in a dark basement. Fortunately, we have along the left side here a, book, a series of bookcases filled with books that will most likely be useful. In the top right corner here, we have a staircase, which will be our primary exit from this basement. Coat rack, some chairs and such, and a strange scribbling on the wall. An inscription, a circle of esoteric symbols etched into the metal wall. They draw your eye to their otherworldly shapes. This is a classic roguelike. So we have turn-based movement. Nothing in this world will move until we're ready to move. But we're going to go ahead and head to the other room here. Opening up this door, and you'll see our little sight cones here. Um, the reason that everything's dark here is that it's pitch black. The sepia is things that we have seen before but are outside of our vision. And then this gray is the fog of war of what we have never seen. I'm going to check the other room here. Looks like we got a TV, a, smart a smartphone sitting on the TV. We're actually going to go ahead and pick up that smartphone here. Grabbing it, adding it to our inventory. The smartphone will help us. Um, it's a popular fancy smart smartphone capable of taking photos, an integrated camera, and even illuminating the area. One of the best things, though, is that it helps us track consumed calories. So we're going to go ahead and um, activate that. And we'll check our tr calorie tracker. We only we consumed zero calories today and zero yesterday. But the nice thing about that is that whenever we do have food to eat, that'll help us keep track of our calories between days and keep healthy. Looks like over here we have some more bookshelves. Some more books that we'll take a better track of in a moment but we want to just take a good look at our surroundings and here we got a nice little bathroom with actually some pretty good supplies we're gonna go ahead and take some of this we'll take the uh, bandages and um we'll leave the rest for later because we'll be back here in the distance you hear this is the end but we're going to ignore it for now someone's screaming above us we don't know what's going on on the surface yet, but it can't be good. We're going to take the office scissors, tuck them into our backpack. Or, correction, we don't have a backpack yet. We're going to tuck them, tuck them into our uh, dress shirt and dress camo. We have this nice Academy Magus look going for us. We were all always a little bit of a nerd, so now, you know, being a mage really justifies. We do find a small mana crystal left behind by our master on the ground. Some water still in the toilet. Perhaps that'll become useful later. Or closed doors behind us as we go. And there seems to be a photo here. It's a photo of a jovial old wizard. He seems to be dancing with a coat rack in the basement. A stack of suitcases in the background. Interesting. So there's no suitcases here. But I do believe that there's a coat rack here. Yes, it's a coat rack with a bathrobe and a full-faced uh, motorcycle helmet. I don't seem to be able to interact with it, but maybe if we grab it, pull it out of the way, Nothing happened. 
But as we step onto the place where it was before, we see your surroundings shift. So something's changed in the room. Something around here. These scrawlings of symbols behind his, what now is a bead curtain. Always had secrets, I guess he did. He has some sort of weird scorecard in here. Almost like he was like watching TV here. And a secret study. In the background, we see a corpse of a human. I guess that explains where he went. And a book on geospatial systems. And a translocator gate. A gate for translocation. Cast the translocation spell or use a translocator to choose the state of destination. That's unfortunate. Well, I guess nothing to do about that now. We'll have to leave the book for now because we don't really have any room. Check his shelves. He has a lesser mana potion. Another uh, uh, mana crystal. That's going to be really useful. And some books. That scroll of Heart and Earth is going to be pretty good as well. And then on his desk, he has a Reign of Perception plus two. I mean, yeah, we'll go ahead and put that on right away. Goes on our left finger. And we can go to our character sheet here. In the top left, you'll see our, our starting stats. And our perception went from the, the actual of nine up to 12. Which is going to make us much better at seeing things, and it's also going to make us much better at shooting at things um, from a distance. We also have, what are these? Blood power generators. Using the latest advancement in technology, this bionic is able to convert the innate energy stored in blood into bionic power. The stronger the blood, the better. And hold up to 100 milliliters of blood. Okay. I guess that's some sort of bionic. Also a book of a book of alpha male quarterly. That's funny. Well, we'll leave this for now. Close the bead curtain. And we are going to tentatively. We've been hearing wumps and thunks from above us. Out in the distance. Crashes. Chaos of the city above. We are going to tentatively check up the stairs. Immediately, we see a zombie in the distance, a human body swaying as it moves, an unstoppable rage visible in its oily black eyes. Does he see us? He sees us, and he's hostile. He's standing over the corpse of something freshly slain. We can see that our window over top of our staircase here is broken out. We only can get a glimpse of the building around us before we need to duck back down into cover, escaping from what is definitely some hostile intentions wait here in a moment catching our breath ignoring the sounds above us we're going to peek back out see where he's gotten to looks like despite the fact that he can see us he isn't coming for us so we're going to go ahead and crouch and you can see the little symbol over my head that crouching hopefully get a reduced vision on some of these things take a look around we do see that there's another house over there more zombies and close that door so that they can't see us in a bathroom and here we'll take a quick respite see about um our main here our main concern here is day one needs today we need shelter but that can probably be accommodated by the basement at least for the time being but our master lived in a a series of buildings um and a small neighborhood with basements all around we're not going to get any peace and quiet here we'll eventually need to move um, the secondary need we we have is water, and then the third is food. So hopefully we're going to be able to find what we need around here. We can check these things. Um, I'm actually going, yeah, any, any bandages we find, we are going to take with us. And, uh, we want at least one of these bottles of antiseptic here, which goes into our, uh, pockets again. Um, because if something bites us, it could leave a very potentially infected wound. And that could be the end of us very, very quickly. I'll peek through the curtains here. See what we see. Doesn't look like there's any zombies in the in the background or in the in the backyard. However, I do see something highly valuable: a brazier, a ma raised metal disc in which to safely burn things. That will be incredible. A brazier will allow us to have a contained fire for day one. That will help us solve some of our water needs. Now we just need something to transport water. Preferably something metal, but if not, we can just use a bunch of bottles and start like cooking water. We also need something to cook the water in, like a pot or a pan. The brazier will have to be something we save for later. Okay, we're gonna crouch again. 
close that door behind us, make sure nothing gets in there, and move carefully through the house. Zombie dog. It's pretty far away. Doesn't see us. We're going to move into the darkness here. This area here is, in fact, very dark, so it, sh it should only have a few tiles of vision, like about this-ish around itself. So if it gets within that range of us... Oh, wow. A hiking backpack at the beginning of the game. I promise, guys, I didn't see this or anything like that. That is an amazing find at the beginning of the game. That is going to be absolutely incredible. Let's see if we can... Realistically speaking, the person... The, the, the careful person inside of me wants to say that, uh, nothing in the cool bots, damn, wants to say that, uh, we should go back into the basement and we should just wait until night. These things don't be able to, can't seem to be able to see very well, not very long distances. So that would be the safe thing to do. Northwest, you hear crunch. That's not good. Something's banging on the wall of our house. Probably heard us moving around. Jean jacket here. There's a kitchen. We can get to the kitchen. From the south and below you here. Fuck do you want from me? Sounds like Oh shit. That dog found us. Okay, we stand up. Swing the quarter sap. We got a hit with 14 damage. It missed us. Another hit. Swinging, missing wildly, and we crunch it down. This little skull above it is indicating that this thing will get up. Reanimated by whatever dark forces has claimed the world. So we're going to crush it to bits. Ignoring the footsteps we hear outside. From the north, we hear footsteps. Close. Not close enough, though. Crash back down again. So that you can't see out the windows. And we're going to check the fridge. I am an elf, so that does mean that uh, stuff like horseradish and unfertilized eggs and butter, they don't appeal to me. But the eggs will be useful, so we're going to go ahead and take them. We can make meals out of them. Same thing with the fruit jam and the pickles. Lunch meat, cheese... Now that we have this hiking backpack, we can be a little bit greedier about what we take. I was originally planning on coming up here and just grabbing the bare essentials. We'll grab the bottle opener. We'll need it eventually. And, uh... That's all I'm going to grab for... Actually, I'm going to grab these forks. As well. I think I've heard before that you can make, uh... You can make lock pips out of them. A cast iron frying pot. We'll grab one of those. Some butter knives, cotton patches. I think I might grab one of these gallon jugs. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to take the challenge of ammonia. Where is it? There. Ignore everything again and pour it out onto the ground. Now we have an empty gallon jug. We can fill that with water and we can start trying to boil some of that water with that pot we found. I think I see some matches. Ooh, and a candle. Very good. Very good. Flashlight. Uh, a hammer. Just one of them. Some batteries. The long strings might be useful for crafting. I'm not sure. A mini lighter and a matchbook. Can't have too much fire. We'll take it all. Ooh, some pliers. And uh, we'll take an Exacto knife. Oh, and a screwdriver. Yeah. I just wanted one screwdriver, please. Thank you. There we go. I think that's all that's useful here. We can always come back for more of it. I just want enough so that we can get through our first few days here. We don't really want to be moving around this place during the day whenever possible. Check this last cupboard. Looks like a whole bunch of coffee. Wow, that's a lot of coffee and, and tea. Um, some forced honey and some spoons and some thyme. Not much to, to speak of, but... Uh -huh. well, now we've just spotted something new. A plastic golem. Traditionally, making a golem is a months-long process involving hand tools and precision craftsmanship. A stone golem is as much of a work of art as it is a magical device. The advent of 3D printing has made it easy to get into the golem-making hobby. And plastic go golems have soared in, I assume, that's going to be popularity. That's not good. It is hostile, and faster than us, and it can see us. Fortunately, our magic teaching tells us a little bit about golems. So we're not going to move, and we're going to examine our surroundings. Because we know something about golems that the average person wouldn't. Golems are big, and they have an order. They are not to break windows. They're not to bust down walls. They're not brutes like zombies are. In fact, that golem is a life send. It will regenerate, and it will likely take out a lot of the zombies in the area for us. But there is a caveat. 
they will walk through doors and come crush us. So we're going to look around. So our front door is closed. That's a window. It can't fit through the window. And our back door is closed. So we need to check this room and make sure there isn't a way into this house. Because if there is, that golem can come in and crush us to bits. So we're going to move very quickly. Back here. Check back here. There's an open window. We're going to go ahead and close it. Close the curtains over here. Of course, be a pack rat. Oh, blanket. We're going to pick up the blanket. <laughs> be a pack rat real quick. Double check this area. And then we'll close the door behind us. Is that book very useful? No, it's not. Are these books any useful? No, they're just entertainment. And we'll close the curtains in here as well. Okay. So now that threat, that golem, has essentially been converted into a very powerful, te although temporary, ally. He is going to go around murdering the countryside, destroying every zombie he comes across, and basically beating up anything he comes he comes across. With the caveat of being, if we leave our house here, we're going to be in trouble. And we do have a general idea of what the nearby city looks like, and we are surrounded by a neighborhood, a massive neighborhood. There must have been thousands of people living here. And now they're all zombies. So we need to get out of here. Um, we need to find some place to move to that is going to be farther away from all of the threats. Or is going to be tall enough or deep enough that we're going to be safe enough from the zombies that they won't hear us whenever we're doing our crafting and our making of food and stuff like that. Just be uh, basically a, a short-term home base. Um, so we're going to look around the map real quick. And just get our bearings before we go back into our basement. So north of us. <laughs> okay, well, that's where the golem came from. Okay, that's, so that's both a good thing and a bad thing. In the top right corner, you'll see that it says wizard tower. So this building directly to the north of us is a wizard tower. That means that that thing is going to be pouring golems. Both stone, plastic, clay, all sorts of golems. It's going to be pouring golems out of it. The natural defenders of the wizard tower that the wizard, the grand archmage, would have left behind. And it, almost makes sense that we live so close to one our uh master having taught us in the basement of only one building over from the wizard i imagine this wizard probably could have been a potential tutor for us even but that's going to be more than we can handle on day one so we're going to look around at some of the other colored buildings here what is this off in the distance another wizard tower you know what i'm going to start marking these so we're going to go in here and we're going to make a note we're going to make it red make it a giant w and say wizard tower so that'll put a giant red W on that. And we'll do the same over here. Having two wizard towers so close is really valuable, though. Once we get the ability to clear these out um, and we get some our, our feet underneath of us, essentially, we can go over there to get books and scrolls and learn more magic. That's going to be a massive key to our success and a key to our future. Because again, we have this dream of becoming an Archmage, and that dream still burns bright in the back of our head. So we definitely want to try and... See if we can find enough spells to make our survival in this world much easier. Looks like then other than just these gray houses, which all of these gray things are houses here. Um, we do have a craft shop. That could be a lot of different things from my experience. Crafts could be everything from like blowing glass all the way down to like whittling wood. Um, we have a coffee shop. There's a chance we could get some food and drinks there. A subway station. That seems dangerous. I don't know what lurks in the subways, but there can't be anything good. Then all the way down here, we have an apartment tower. We might be able to climb that in order to get a look on uh, surroundings. Some botanical gardens, a music venue. Uh, nothing nothing amazing, but we do have a insight into down, uh, downtown of the mega city here. Looks like if we head farther that way, we're getting farther away from the... Uh, the urban buildings and we get to like these dense urban buildings office towers and stuff like that in this downtown riverside area this area is going to be incredibly dangerous but if you look at all of these colored buildings here there's just going to be so many potential opportunities here we probably want to try and move towards it but maybe stay far enough away that uh we're not just heading headfirst into danger is that a library it's a police station a police station that's that has some possibility. There's probably some defensible walls in there. I'm just guessing. I've actually never checked out a police station before. There's probably some defensible walls in there. Might be a basement. Might be a second or third floor. If we needed up to a third floor, that would actually be amazing because it would mean that we're far enough away from the zombies that they won't hear us as we're doing our day-to-day -day crafting. 
that might be an early goal for us. Once we get some basic food and ba some basic water sorted, we'll try and wait till night and we might go and scope out that police station. But for now, like I said, basic food and water. We're going to uh, peek through again, check to make sure there's nothing back there. Doesn't look like there is. What we're going to do is we're open, open the curtains. Uh, open the curtains. Stand up. Accidentally running. And we're going to try and sneak back into the backyard. Quietly as we can. We hear thwack. It sounded like it was close by. I don't see any noise indicators. Okay, we're going to crouch again. Go through the backyard here. Oh, there it is. Something trying to bust down the door. So we need to be quick. So we're going to take this brazier, take it down, pick it up. Brazier, not brazier. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just going to run now and get back inside. Close the curtains. We're going to check. Here's footsteps. Could be anything. This place is so chaotic right now. It looks like nothing saw us. As long as nothing sees us now, this window's a problem. Being broken out like this. Go back down into the basement, and uh, I don't feel safe here. The stairs being so close, we're going to go ahead and peek back up here. The stairs being so close to this window here, and the possibility that a zombie walks in and then immediately walks down these stairs, means that we definitely want to set up in this back area. As far back as we can. Probably not all the way into the bathroom, but at least here. Which means that... Um, We'll have enough room, potentially, to spread out. So give me a moment here, and I am going to set up everything we've got and kind of get sorted. So we'll go ahead and deploy the brazier, get it on the ground, and then I am going to sort <laughs> from south and below you hear hysterical laughter. That's not good. So now we have all of our books in one spot. We do actually have a chest set over here. In fact, we'll go ahead and gr grab the chest set and put it on our table over... Oop, that's our quarter stuff. Where's the chest set? Our table over here. So we have something to play with whenever we want to... Uh, kind of, we're trying to remember the old world. We're just going to start a pile of everything useful. So this copper wire, these forks, strings, all of this stuff over here. Again, just ignore the distractions. It'll be fine. And then everything else, we're going to just drop. And we'll sort it out. What do we need to keep on us? We need to keep our medicine on us. We'll drop all of our food except for one thing. Keep our smartphone and our generally our tools on us. We don't need the pliers, though. That's for, like, more advanced crafting. Same thing with the scissors. It's more for more advanced crafting. We definitely don't need the cast iron pan. But the rest of those things are pretty useful to keep on us, just in case we get stuck somewhere. I'm an elf. I'm a member of high society. I don't want to be crafting, sitting on the ground, like some sort of commoner. So we're going to come into the other room here. And we're going to grab this table and shove it into the next room. Put it over here in the corner. And we'll use this as a place in order to... Uh, craft things in the future. Lastly, we are going to make a nice little firewood spot. Um, actually, I need to put it here, don't I? Yeah. Firewood spot. Now all we need to do is actually get some firewood going. So we'll go ahead and uh, light up one of our magical spells, which we failed because we uh, have something in our hands. We'll drop our quarterstaff. Try again. Why the fuck are you doing this to me? You here. We're going to have to deal with that eventually. With that much loud noise happening nearby, we're not going to be able to sleep. But for now, we're going to take apart these bookshelves. So that we can get some wood. Um, I'm going to use my psychic field of... Or, no, not the field of light. I'm going to use the psychic uh, candle glow instead, which... Puts a temporary glow, and I can concentrate on this. And then we're going to haul all of this. 
ignoring the shouts and pleas of those above us as we do it onto our wood spot. And then finally, we have fire. Which means we can go into our craft menu, go over to food, and wait, we're missing something. Clean water. We have a tool of boiling. We have a nearby fire. Oh, we're missing the obvious thing. Water. So that's why we cleaned out a gallon jug earlier. Let's see if we can figure out where it went. We have a gallon jug here. I'm going into the bathroom. And we can pour all of the awful toilet water into this gallon jug. The only problem then is that um, we're going to need something to store that in. Hmm. I don't think it'll let me make all 15 water and then put it back into the same jug. Because the problem is, is that our cast iron frying pan, although it's going to be able to boil water, it's not a terribly efficient way of doing it. I think ideally, we're going to want to find a pot at some point. So that means that I'm going to go ahead and extinguish this fire. And as unfortunate as it is, we are going to pick up our staff again. Do you see it? A zombie came in here. They must have heard us deconstructing the, the bookshelves. We have magic. A magic missile. Or even a mana bolt. And we could easily take it down. But if we were to use one of those, the cackling sound of the magic missile would surely draw more zombies. We're going to have to be brave. And we're going to have to go into melee with it. Our fragile elf bones. This is not going to go well. It looks like it's slightly hurt already. You can see on the right side, those three bars indicating that it's only about three out of five. It's total health. Looks like it's already been beaten up, roughened up by something. Take one hit. Oh, good. A good immediate 14 whack. Again, a critical. Another hit. And it does actually manage to bite our arm. That's not good. We just keep going. Okay, we got it down. Wasn't too loud. Doesn't have anything for us. How rude. Wait. Was that our master? Our master came back. Damn. In the end, we had to take down our master. But it wasn't one of those happy versions of taking down our master and looting his stuff. You know, like, we better, we became better than him. No. He came back and tried to kill us. We're going to go ahead and drag him back into his room. Ignore the shouting again. Continue ignoring the shouting. That's going to be a problem. And, uh, close. Oh, he destroyed the bead curtain coming out. Damn. We can't even close him in there. It's a sad day when you have to destroy your own master, but, uh, we have a more immediate concerns. We need to get back up here. Crash down again. See if we can find something else to store water in. Some bottles, perhaps? Not sure what we have available here. We can find another gallon jug. That would be about perfect. Carefully move through the house. Keep to the shadows as much as possible. Okay. The kitchen is fully bright. But if we didn't get to those windows, we can close them this time. Did anything see us? I don't think so. I don't see anything over there. Okay. We aren't safe, but we're better. Um, there's a bowl here. Hey, that's actually pretty useful. Now that we have a backpack, I feel like I, I, I've turned into a full loot hobo now, knowing that we can kind of just grab whatever we want. A teapot? It's smaller volume than what we have already. Um, let's see. I don't see anything super useful there. I'm looking for more large containers. Like the gallon jugs. There we go. Another gallon jug. This one of uh, ammonia. We're going to go ahead once again. Pour that out. Just ignore the distractions. We'll keep ignoring everything until we actually see a zombie on top of us. There's not much else we can do. We have priorities. We have to get food. We have to get water. Or else we're not going to survive long enough for a zombie to kill us anyway. That was super crash. How close was that? Not close enough to matter. 
nothing saw us. Let's go back downstairs. Get back into our area. We're going to go ahead and turn the light back on. Just ignore the sounds. They're just going to keep coming. Okay. Now we can make clean water. And we're going to make a bulk 15 right away. Put our uh, quarter staff on the ground. Okay. That is step one. So we have shelter and we have clean water. Go ahead and drink some of that water now. Mm -hmm. Fuck, hungry. That's not good either. Something's fucking southeast of us. And below us? That's not good either. So our next priority is food. We have some food. We have some fruit jam, some milk, some cheese. Can we make anything out of that? We can make scrambled eggs. Um, how long will that those eggs last? Normally it'll say in consume time, but because I am so so picky about my food, I'm an elf that won't even check the expiration date. We have the core essentials. We have food. We have water. We have a goal if we check our map again. We have this police station to the southeast. Some place that we could potentially hole up in. Some place we could possibly go to in order to to find safety. So we're going to take solace in the fact that we have goals and that we will soon be able to do something with our life. So for the rest of this first night, or I, I should say the rest of this first day, because it's only 10 a.m. We did all of that within the first few hours here. We are going to gather up our books and we're going to study. Just trying to ignore the chaos around us. And hope that some of these books are going to have useful enough things in them. There we go. Useful enough things in them that we can learn something to possibly survive. A full face motorcycle helmet. That would actually be probably pretty good defense. Problem is that I'm a fancy elf. I don't want to wear a helmet. Especially a motorcycle helmet. Like one of these earth motorcycle helmets. No, thank you. I'll drop all of our books in here. The scroll of hardened earth. Oh. Again, ignore the shouting. Just ignore the shouting. And um, we're going to read the scroll of hardened earth. It would teach us the spell hardened earth, which is an earth shaper spell. Well, so how if Magicraft works is that there are uh, eight schools that you can align yourself to. And each of the schools, is it eight or is it six? I don't remember. But there's schools that you can align yourself to. And each one of them has an opposite school. And whenever you learn one of them, um, you cannot learn the other. So if I were to learn an Earth Shaper spell here, I would be locked out from its opposite. However, I already know ahead of time that uh, Earth Shaper is one of the schools that I would be very interested in. Eventually, it'll allow me to make some really interesting tools. And the opposite of Earth Shaper, I think, is Technomancer, which is eh, it's human technology thing. So we're going to go ahead and read this book again. Trying our best to uh, ignore what's going on outside, all of the shrouding and screaming. I just, I just really hope that, um, I uh, really hope that that golem can take care of it. So here we go. Learning this spell will make you an earth shaper. Earth shapers have allowed their minds to sink deep, sink deep within the stones and metals of the planet and become one with its secrets. To a master earth shaper, spells can be as permanent as the stones they are created from, and time is measured in geological eras. But it'll lock me out of Technomancer. Technomancers are the new breed of modern magicians, blending their arcane might with their advanced knowledge of the fundamental nature of the universe. They use technology to enhance their magic and vice versa. I have no interest in beating Technomancer because I'm a fancy magic elf that wants to be an orc mage. Technomancy is more of like charging cell phones and like, you know, doing stupid shit like that. It's beneath me. So we're going to go ahead and learn Harden Earth. That I'll add to our spell list here giving us the ability to depress dirt together so hard it becomes hard as rock. A great way to turn makeshift barricades into a fortress. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, read through all these books, and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, here we go. So it looks like we have a spell book here, that spell scroll that we don't need. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of skill books along the center here. We can, we can learn some computings, piercing weapons, applied science, mechanics, electronics, and then in yellow here are some books of skills that we already have, but we could read them for fun, 
um, if we if we needed to. Um, and then below that are books that are just completely useless to us, and some books that we don't have the abilities to know yet, including one that's really interesting to me. Metaphysics 3, not always so, practicing the true spirit of Zen. That's interesting because metaphysics is the skill tied to psychic powers, and ever since the Cataclysm, we did have a few minor psychic powers, our ability to create light and our ability to blink around, which will become very handy, but without a further teaching or some sort of relic, we're not going to ever actually be able to improve those skills. They'll kind of just be weird tricks that we can do. We might get insight into how to increase them, but we're going to need something else to actually do so. Um, as it stands, the only ones here that really super interest me are um, applied science and honestly just applied science. Mechanics, electronics, and computers, those will be useful later. But uh, before all of that, we are probably going to take a good amount of time here and learn this book that our master, let's say, left behind for us. Translocate self. This allows us to translocate ourselves back to the attuned gate. I'm very excited to learn this because if possible, it means that we can use this space not only as a launching point, but we can then teleport back to it in the future. While we're reading, we hear nothing but screams. People screaming at each other, yelling about meat and eating. <sighs> the world outside has become truly different and very dangerous. And while we're reading, I'm noticing that we are currently overweight. So we do want to check before we go out at nighttime, which will fall around 8 p.m. at night. We do want to go out and check um, what we're carrying to make sure that we're carrying as little as possible. because we're going to need to be able to run away from things. But we did learn Translocate Self. And it is too difficult for us to cast. That's not actually a problem. Because what you can do with this is, if I wanted to, we're not going to do this fully, but we can go back into this book and we can study for, let's say, 30 minutes. Heard a whiz. That kind of sounds like someone shot a gun up there. And we can learn some experience. It will take a lot of reading in order to get this to a higher level. But with a level 15 difficulty spell... It does mean that I will be able to eventually get this going. And we will train more on that later. It being only 5 p.m. at night after all of our reading does mean that, realistically speaking, we should try our best. Extinguish our fire. Eat a little bit of the meat and or food that we've managed to get. And see if we can catch even a moment of rest before our nighttime excursion. We've been up all day. So we're going to save and lay down and hope. With all of this screaming, I really doubt it. Because this is one of the reasons why I'm worried about all this screaming. Is that we can get a few hours of sleep before we have to get up. Yeah, look at that. They're just screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. And even if I did fall asleep, they'd probably immediately wake me up. Just toss and turn, trying to lay in bed. This might be a higher priority for us than getting to the police station. We're going to stop trying to sleep. So it says that they're south and below of us. If we zoom out far enough, can we see where that sound's coming from? What the hell? So much screaming. What the fuck is that? And it's below us? What the hell? I don't even know what that is. But it does mean that we're not going to be able to sleep here. They're going to keep us up all night. We're going to eat more of our food. Make sure that we're nice and uh, settled. And uh, let's hope to God there's not some sort of secret lab over there or something like that. Because we're not going to be able to handle it if it, if, it, if it is. Some of these places I've heard do actually have like secret laboratories. We're going to go ahead and drop as much stuff as we can. Whatever we don't need. Why do we have even more mana crystals on us? We should, if these things are like breeding in my inventory. What the hell? We don't need the batteries. Um, we don't need the gallon jug of clean water. We will try... Now nah, we'll keep it on us. Just in case we get trapped. Um, and we do want to grab some of our food. Um, that's not that heavy. So we'll gr grab the jar of jam. With this screaming beneath our house. We only have two options really. We can either get to this police station as soon as possible and see if we can secure it. I'm really hoping we can. I'm hoping that there's some sort of lockdown or something. 
but it's a long walk. With the subway so close, there is a chance that the subway system runs under this house, and there's just monsters in the subway screaming. But it does mean that we can't sleep here. Nighttime is our ally. But we do have to worry. As an academy mage, we know about golems. Their vision range is enormous. We have our elven eyes, and we have a long way that we can see, but golems will be able to see us from even that even that amount of distance. Uh, no? What are you doing? There we go. Can't climb because you're rolling a quarter staff. Um, yeah, we'll drop it, I guess. Can we pick it up? We can. See? Even if... I thought that was a zombie. I literally thought that was a zombie. It was a bush. Okay. We're going to zoom out a little bit and see about moving down the street here. We're going to move down the center of the street. Hoping that this gives us enough room to move if something comes up. Some corpses. What is it? Corpse of a petrified person. Poor person was just staring at the stars or something. A cataclysm took their brain from them. Took their sentiment. And eventually they just get eaten by the horde. We probably should have checked this car back there. See if it was working. Is that a bicycle? I think that is a bicycle. Oh, it's destroyed, though. It is absolutely destroyed. Okay. Let's leave it. It's not that far. Just keep moving down the street. And hopefully, we don't run into anything. In fact, I'm going to turn on safe mode. Safe mode is a mode where uh, if something enters our cone of vision here, it will stop me from moving immediately. I won't be able to press anything until I manually turn safe mode back off. Which means that we can kind of run in the dark here. I can hold down, move, and move a lot faster. See? There we go. Zombie. Eight tiles to the south. We're going to go ahead and turn off safe mode. And as long as we stay pretty far away from him... Oh, there's a zombie runner there. That's a problem. Can't see us yet. But if he gets wind of us, we'll be in trouble. Okay, we're going to go to the north then. What is this? This is sand and dirt in a volleyball court. Skirt by those runners. Oh, that's another runner. Yeah. N recently risen body moves quickly, darting its head back and forth, gnawing at its hands. If that thing gets a sight of us, we will not be able to run from it. We will have to turn and fight. With how many zombies are here, we might have to resort to our magic, our very loud magic. It looks like for now, we got through, through to that group. What are those? We have a zombie soldier. Once a soldier, it's dressed head to toe in combat gears and carries itself rather steadily for a zombie. We also have a decayed zombie, a once dead human corpse. Its discolored, swollen flesh is riddled with festering wounds and open sores. And then just a generic zombie down here. That's another indication of the oddness of this particular outbreak. A Z9. Zombified version of one of the German Shepherd dogs used for law enforcement. Its deformed body is encased in a protected Kevlar harness. Well, that's not good. It means that's a really fucking fast zombie that's armored. Let's avoid that like the plague. Okay, we still need to get one block over before we can make south for the uh, police station. But as I was saying, that's another indication of what's going on here. Is that these zombies, they're not a disease. It's almost like they're living again. Corpses are reanimating. Whatever it is, from our experience of magic, we know this isn't necromancy. This is something else. Okay. From here, I think we're going to head south. Hopefully we can get past the hordes. Oh, jeez. Something going on here. Four runners clustered around a zombie. Oh man, there's a corpse there. A messenger bag. Clean pair of polka dot stockings and a sweater. I think they just tore, tore something to shreds. They're ravenous though. Another group. Some fat zombies and decayed zombies. And another set of fresh remains. While we're standing here, we'll check the car real quick. 
Uh, the car doesn't have a fuel tank. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Don't worry about that UI. The car UI is uh, kind of crazy and hard to deal with. We're almost there. Almost at the police station. Hopefully, it's a safe place to hole up. And then all we have to do is go back and go for our stuff that we got. Oh, but we hear so much movement. Please don't tell me it is. That's the station. And it's filled with movement. It's filled with zombies. I don't know if this is going to be worth taking out. But that's where we're going to have to leave you. This has been Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, the journey of Vellum. I have been Arima. If you guys are more interested in this series, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It will greatly help keep me motivated and keep the channel and the series going. I'm hoping to do some episodes of this several times a week, possibly once a day. We'll see how long it takes to edit, but look forward to more of it coming very soon. If you're interested in what mods I'm using and in Cataclysm in general and possibly are looking to either play along or just play it yourself, check out the Discord in the link in the description of the video. I will have a section of my Discord dedicated entirely to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I wish I could just go over it here, but this game is incredibly complicated and it would take a very long time. So as it stands, I am going to be referring to the Discord in order to... Uh, uh, pass on that information. If someone knows of a better way for me to record that information easier, feel free to leave a comment in, in, in uh, the comment section below. Next time, we'll pick up with trying to figure out if we can get into this police station, seeing if this is a true home or not, and seeing what comes for Vellum next. I've been Arima. Goodbye.